It is so wonderful to see so many of you here on this glorious historic occasion. My name is David Pello, and I am proud to be professor and chair of the University of California Santa Barbara's Environmental Studies Program. We have 7,300 alumni, 1,100 current majors, we are one of the first, one of the oldest, and certainly the largest, and most definitely the best, and most successful environmental studies program in the world. <laughs> we started this program in the wake of the 1969 Santa Barbara oil blowout and spill when faculty came together from multiple departments under the realization that no single field, no single field alone could address our environmental crisis on its own. And that we needed to create multidisciplinary educational programs that would prepare our students for the future by ensuring that they have the skills to solve the grand challenges of our time, to promote inspiring and transformative solutions that will benefit all of humanity and strengthen our life support systems, our ecosystems. Some examples of the extraordinary work that our amazing students do include introducing environmental justice curriculum into the public school systems of Los Angeles and Seattle school systems. Building campus and community gardens to provide food, healthy, sustainable, organic, and culturally appropriate food to those who are food insecure. <laughs> Conducting vital research on endangered sea turtle conservation efforts in Costa Rica and working with local communities to preserve their cherished cultural practices. Participating in the successful campaign to secure a victory for climate justice in Oxnard, California, when we beat back the proposal for the polluting Puente power plant. <laughs> Playing a vital role supporting the Santa Barbara City Council in its successful efforts to pass a resolution to go 100% renewable by 2030. and showing up at a hearing just last week in Santa Maria to oppose the expansion of oil wells in Cat Canyon and to promote, to promote sensible, sustainable, and socially just policies for economic development for Santa Barbara County. Our students. We have the opportunity, the ingenuity, the know-how, and the determination to re-energize the global environmental movement so that we can build an ecologically sustainable, resilient, and democratic future for generations to come. UC Santa Barbara played an integral role in launching the modern environmental movement and the field of environmental studies 50 years ago, and we intend to continue leading in that effort for the next half century and beyond. We are in this fight to win it because our very survival depends upon it. And now, and now I am honored to introduce to you one of those amazing students whom I have the pleasure of working with here at UC Santa Barbara. Rose Strauss is from San Anselmo, California. She is from San Anselmo, California and organizes with the Sunrise Movement, advocating for a Green New Deal. She is returning as a sophomore environmental studies major at UC Santa Barbara. She's returning because she spent an entire quarter off, off of school to do what? She was campaigning, campaigning for the midterm elections, and boy, did she deliver. Rose 
Strauss is excited to bring the energy of the youth climate movement back here to Santa Barbara and is firing people up all across this city and our region. So please, please join me in welcoming to the Arlington stage, Rose Strauss. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm Rose, I'm a sophomore at UCSB, and I'm 19 years old. We are here today to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Santa Barbara oil spill. Arguably the catalyst for the modern environmental movement. The spill in 1969 was caused by drilling off of the Santa Barbara coast which led to three million gallons of oil to leak into the ocean, suffocating one of the most biodiverse marine ecosystems. It was devastating, and the world began to wake up to the urgency of addressing the environmental crisis. We decided then that it was time to take action. So tell me why, 50 years later, there is still oil being pumped from the ground a few hundred miles offshore from where we are standing. Tell me why we are even entertaining the idea of opening up a massive new oil drilling operation 40 minutes north of here. Tell me why. It has been 50 years and we have done a lot. But we are not there. Not even close. According to the most recent UN IPCC report, we have 11 years left to stop climate change. Failing to meet this deadline is a death sentence for my generation. And although that is terrifying, although that is a weight that every single young person carries with them every day, it means that this movement has changed in fundamental ways. This is no longer about conserving the environment. This is the fight of our lives and the fight for our lives, and there is no time to waste. I come here as a representative of Sunrise Movement, a movement of young people dedicated to stopping climate change and creating millions of good jobs in the process. I just returned from a six-month move to Pennsylvania where I campaigned for the midterm elections and organized full-time with Sunrise. A lot happened in those six months. One of the Pennsylvania candidates for governor called me young and naive when I questioned him on his campaign contributions in relation to his climate change denial. This got international media attention propelling our movement forward and ruining any chance of him being elected governor. <laughs> so, being called young and naive wasn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> but the most frustrating thing about my time in Pennsylvania was a story less told. The candidate for governor, who called me young and naive, was running against an incumbent Democrat who after the events made young and naive voter stickers, after taking thousands of dollars from the fossil fuel industry and allowing an explosive pipeline to run by 40 schools in the county I was working in alone. Time and time again, I have been confronted with politicians who campaign on being on the side of young people, who say they will stand with my generation but when it came down to it, they failed us. They refused to advocate for any real solutions to this crisis. They were too scared to stray from the establishment, too scared to be bold for my generation, too bought out by fossil fuel executives to demand the change that we need. Well, I was raised Jewish with family members who were killed in the Holocaust, and I was brought up to believe that silence in the face of injustice is inexcusable. In fact, it can be deadly. In the words of Elie Wiesel, 
to remain silent and indifferent is the greatest sin of all. Everyday people can do all that we can to live more sustainably, but this will not be enough to create the massive societal transition away from fossil fuels that we need for human civilization as we know it to survive. solution to climate change. We need the solution to prioritize economic and environmental justice and equality. A Green New Deal would put millions of Americans to work transforming our society away from fossil fuels to clean energy. It would guarantee anyone a job in the fossil fuel industry, a job building renewable energy infrastructure, and would prioritize frontline communities in this transition. And our representatives have a moral responsibility to help us get there because they have the lives of every young person on this earth in their hands. We cannot stand idly by as our future and our planet is destroyed before our eyes. We have the power to make the dream of a Green New Deal become a reality. The pressure is on. On the 100th anniversary of the Santa Barbara oil spill, it will be 40 years too late. So we will keep building the movement. We will keep holding our elected officials accountable. But in order for this to work, we must all come together intergenerationally to create the formidable political force that will change the course of history. will not go down without a fight, and I hope that each and every person in this room joins us in demanding a Green New Deal. Thank you.